Bonjour, bonjour, comment ça va? Je suis Cotelia de la Livre, le 2 de la Co-Apriol, mon nom est de la Livre. I am Queen Cotelia, welcome to my channel, bienvenue sur ma chaîne et bienvenue chez Kanja South. Welcome to Kanja South. In this video today, we are going to be discussing connecting to your spirit guides. What exactly and who exactly are your spirit guides? Or should I say, who are your spirit guides? I don't know. We'll see. I have a happy feeling we're going to discuss a lot of those things. But before we get into that particular conversation, I must remind you to please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a sweet, kind comment below, hit your notification button, and please share the video. You all, I'm pr I promise you, every week I say the same thing, and every week the same individuals are sharing the video. I need some different people to share the video. I'm just gonna be honest. I, I, the same people keep sharing, but we need more shares. We need more shares. Um, it's super, super important. You know, we always talk about having community and building community and support, but you don't really have that type of support when you're pretty much walking alone. Because there's few people, if you are here, it tells me that you are either here because you want to connect to truth or you are here um, to try to prove me indifferent, but that's not going to happen. But when living in truth, understand that that's not very common. It's rare. And so with that being the, the case, understand that it's less of us than there are those that actually are um, living in truth. So there's that. Um, so please share the video so more like-minded spiritual individuals can connect to a particular point of reference. Deja, Sifia. Merci, merci beaucoup. Um, you know, of course, we're going to start off with a couple of announcements. The very first thing is the Conjure South Hoodoo Institute. Okay, so I am mad at y'all. I am so upset. I am super angry because nobody told me that the links to the classes were either sold out or charging over $100 for some classes. Now, I think there's one class that's over $100, um, and that's because it's like a long, long class, and you get the bone-throwing kit. It's the bone-throwing series. It's, it's been the same price forever. Um, but a stu uh, someone that wanted to be a part of the Institute was like, Queen, I'm trying to click this link, and this. I'm like, what you mean? This thing is perfectly fine. And so I clicked on it, and I looked, and it was like, oh. So anyways, point being is, that link has been corrected. All of the classes that you need to take are available. The class was like $44 each, except two classes. One is 60, and the other ones is the Bone Throwing Series, which I've already mentioned, and that's because you end up getting material. You still have time to sign up for the Country South Hulu Institute. You still have time to sign up for your interview and take your prerequisite courses. The last day to take your interview or have your interview is August 8th. So you have time, but not that much time. Get these prerequisites down, get them in immediately, and go ahead and get your interview. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to wait all the way until 2024 before you can um, get in here. Don't miss out on it. Don't miss out on it, okay? Um, there's that. So that link is below, ready to go. The next thing is, please remember that we do have the protection um, conjuring class coming up, protection spirits, lights, and charms coming up. Y'all, these classes are <laughs> leaving people. Baby ball baby bald and i'm not lying to you it's what it is but it is so needed and the thing about it is the things that i am teaching because they actually make sense it's like oh wow i can't believe i actually was listening to this bs and it was really this simple and then and then apply the practical, simple things, the traditional things, and then it's like, oh my goodness, what have I been doing? Um, but again, there's more individuals out there who's trying to make a dollar. 
than there are that's really wanting to feel the community. But more importantly, they don't have the capacity, they don't have the resources, the talent, the history, the lineage, the education, the culture to do this. Um, and that's why a lot of people, and I mentioned it so many times, many people will um, are full of knowledge, but will die striving for wisdom. So there's that. The next thing, the July Community Service is available now. July Community Service is the Reset Community Service, meaning pause, wait, hold up, slow up. These head washings that y'all have been doing, people are messaging on a regular basis, queen. Things are beyond clear now, almost to the point that I wish they were not so clear because now I have to actually handle some things. Now I actually got to do some things. Now the, 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 the problem, <laughs> you know, it's like that meme or that gift of the individual who's choking their shadow saying, I thought I said we're not spending no more money kind of deal. We want to save money and they're choking their, their shadow. Um, and so it's, it's all of that. But the July community service is the reset community service, meaning we are, we are mid-year now. Okay, we're mid-year now. Let us reconfigure some things. Let us figure out some things. Let us approach some things a little bit differently. Let's get us a good, clear. And with this head washing, it's going to give you that clarity. So now it's going to give you that moment in time and space to do what is necessary. Um, but the community service. I'm giving you all an exclusive cleansing and reversing oil. I normally do not do reversings. I normally do not do reversing oils, but we're giving people that stuff back. This July, they about to catch this Leo fire, okay? They about to catch all of that. Um, and it's just that simple, point blank and period. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. So you're gonna be getting your cleansing and reversing oil, your La Rota Vea, your road opening oil, et um, besoin de, de la protection ou le protège, um, protégé, which is your protection, okay? So you'll be getting your cleansing oil and reversing. You'll be getting, which is one oil together, your road opening oil and your um, protection oil. And all of those things, I want to teach you how to work them um, into a bath or to whatever capacity spirit sees fit. I'm gonna give you a couple of different ways and for you to identify what is resonating with you and feels more at home when you get those. Um, you can begin to purchase that today. That link also will be below, but um, that link ends next Monday the 24th. I believe it's the 24th, okay? And the next thing, the virtual coven is coming up. The virtual coven is coming up. Super excited. Um, I must tell you all too, y'all need, <laughs> I, I get that some people are like, I don't know, I don't really know. Get in the virtual coven. If for nothing else, you get discounts on classes, you get free spell work monthly, multiple spell works possibly. So the virtual coven, that join button is also below is the space where the witches play, point blank and period. Um, let me just mark off these little notes here. Institutes, class, virtual coven, community service, those products. Oh, and last thing, some people have missed, um, some people were purchasing the July bundle after the first bundle, before um, after the first class part, um, um, was launched and so you're going to be receiving that link to that first class you will be receiving the uh, so there's a pre-recorded link and then you're going to get your zoom link for the protection class without a doubt now you cannot you no longer can get into it at this moment in time which is okay there's nothing wrong with that um but also in the hoodoo boot camp which has been phenomenal. We're, we're ending that next week, um, the first part, but then we've got the bonus boot camp that's coming up after that. Um, 
that being said, um, some people have missed the boot camp. Some people have missed um, some of the, either the master class or the bundle class. After Monday, we are gonna sit down and send the links out to everybody. We want it to, we want to make sure that we complete this first boot camp, see who's missed everything, and then send the link out. It's just gonna be easier that way and more convenient where no one is being missed for that reason. So give us about a week to send those links out. All right, so let's now get into today's topic. Connecting to your spirit guides. Who are your spirit guides? What are your spirit guides? All of these things. So today we're going to really bring a focus to a couple of things. First and foremost, who and or what are spirit guides? One. And then two, the three best ways and the three worst ways about connecting. I hear people come through on a regular basis. Queen, I'm having a difficult time connecting. Why can't I hear them? Why aren't they working for me? What's going wrong? What am I doing wrong? What's being said or what's not being said or what's being done? or was not being done. And this particular conversation will give you some clear insight to what may or may not be happening, okay? So having the conversation of connecting to your spirit guides, we first need to identify and understand who and or what are spirit guides. Well, let me break it down to you because a lot of people come to me with that question. Who's walking with me? What are my spirit guides saying? Well, let me help you understand that. And this is, here's one of those things that people have an issue with. When you come to me talking about spirit guides, I'm gonna look at you like, you know how when dogs look at people, when they do something weird or strange or they say something they don't understand or a sound is very odd, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do exactly that. Hmm? <laughs> um, why? Because people come, again, words mean things. Words absolutely mean things. So you come to me talking about spirit, guys. I then, because I grew up in a culture where when we said spirits, we were not talking about um, energies. Um, planetary energies, um, chakra um, modalities. Um, we were not talking about those kind of things. When we mentioned the term spirit, okay, um, we understood that we were talking about, normally it was about the dead, but if it wasn't the dead, we understood that there were our plant allies or spiritual allies or our animal um, allies, or curios rather, right? So when you say spirit, guys, you gotta be very specific to what is guiding you. Why do, I t why do I say this? Because you could have peppermint in your shoes, right? And that spirit is guiding your path of protection, all right? Yes, your ancestors have a purpose to protect, but I could say, oh, well, there's peppermint with you. Or, for example, you may say, well, I don't know. I feel there's a spirit of protection over me. Um, that protection spirit could absolutely be a black racer or um, le, super, le, le, le super um noir, the black snake. Um, and that's another reality that that could be with you. Um, that could be protecting you. It could be on another divine level to where, oh, well, it's not an animal, it's not an herb, but it absolutely could be um, a god or goddess, a divine um, entity or a deity, okay? And that's also a reality too. Now, your ancestors are guides, I do not consider them as spirit guides um, just because I make the difference of, I have this spirit guiding me, plant, herbal, root, animal, etc., summoned otherwise, and then I have my ancestors. So a lot of people say spirit guides, but they're really saying ancestors when they go, well, which spirit guides are with me? Which spirit guides are standing with me? Is it my grandmother? Okay, now we're talking about ancestors. We're not talking about spiritual allies, which is something different, right? So, your ancestors is anybody, 
your ancestors, your ancestral lineage is anybody that is blood related to you that has transitioned before you have, could be considered an ancestor if you so see fit to honor and revere them. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, when it comes to that particular conversation, um, we're not talking about your ancestral court, meaning people who were family friends that passed on, that transitioned, that had a large influence in your life or your pets um, or other particular situations. And depending on your culture and upbringing, it could be a, another type of ally. But we have to be very, we need to be considerate of what we are claiming as spirit guides. So when we're talking about having that conversation of the best ways of communication, the best ways of not communicating or the issues there. Well, I want to show you the three best ways and worst ways of communicating, okay? So, and what you'll find is, I'm like a little title card there, whatever, but what you'll find is, it's almost just op opposition. It is the um, opposing elements of one thing to the other. So let's begin with the top best way or a top best way, there's three ways or the three that I picked here. Um, the first is actually connecting to your customs and blood. What is the worst way? Dismissing your culture and blood, why? Understand this, culturally, and again, here's one of those things that people are gonna have a issue with, but it's the reality of it and it's really important. How is it that we as people of color, people of African descent, have an ancestral space, but it looks exactly like somebody who clearly is not um, of the same blood? Why does that matter? Why does that play a, um, a factor? Well, it plays a factor because if you're trying to connect to your ancestors, but you're using cultural items and things, objects, methods of connecting, you're slapping your people in the face. You're saying, oh, well, what you did doesn't matter, or I'm not gonna take the time to learn what you did, so I'm gonna honor you in this way. I'm gonna honor you like this, and that should be more than enough. I, but no, so you can't water seeds with gasoline and expect to get a flower. Okay, you can't do it. You can't do it, that's not a reality, that's not how things work. You cannot take an ax to an apple tree and expect for oranges and peaches to fall out of it. You can't do it. It doesn't work that way. And so it's just super, super important to understand the culture and the blood of you, okay? So when we're, when we're talking about um, this particular thing, I just had a client reach out to me this, what, yesterday in fact, and she mentioned, or the day before yesterday, about how she had all of these things, or these particular things on her ancestor altar, but really didn't understand why the communication wasn't there. Well, let's just say all the things that were there were culturally appropriate. Um, just because everything is culturally appropriate, does not mean that those items and things are things that are relevant to you and your lineage. So you can have a whole lot of things that are culturally appropriate that is clustering um, and, and um, what is he term? What is he term? Um, taking up room and taking up space. So if your space is cluttered, your ancestors can't tell you and you can't hear, okay? Because it's crowded, it's crowded, it's cluttered, but also you got all of these different apparatuses to, con to connect with them and this apparatus or this way is not how they connect. So for example, you really should be using playing cards or bones, but you wanna do oracle cards, but you don't understand why you're having a difficult time. Okay, that's 
um, it's disrespectful, to be honest. I, I will say this. I've been meaning to say this, and I can't wait to see it on the podcast and somebody can, go, can, um, can share it with somebody. How does your ancestors, and I've said it before, how do your ancestors feel not being able to sit at a table they built for you? How do they feel? How do they feel? What does that look like? Um, and so when you, and so we're looking at that space of the best way, the worst way, excuse me, my hair has attacked this mic. I do apologize, but I'm not even surprised. Voila. Et voila. Um, so the best way is to connect to, connect to the culture, connect to your blood. There was no ancestral money. That's not going to, that's not going to give you, um, and people are like, you don't got to pay your ancestral debt. Mm. It's, it's all very, very strange, but you're, you're, you're putting in and, 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 um, exercising cultural things, cultural appropriating things um, that you that you are expecting a result out of, but it's not your people. And your people not recognizing it or see it or, or whatever. So for example, with my family and specifically my ancestors, they best respond at, when I speak in French to them. That was the first blood in America or before America, well, just 20 years after America was America that came through my lineage. It was that, that was the first thing. And so they actually respond incredibly well to French versus English. Ancestral money versus cowrie shells, ancestral money versus cow meat, ancestral money versus um, other aspects of honor, okay? There's that. The next thing is the top way to um, to connect and not to connect is, I'm gonna start with the not to connect, which honestly is your expectations versus the reality of your communication. I want to repeat that again. Your, expert, your expectations, your expectations versus the reality of the communication. That is, a huge issue. What do I mean by that? Those that have watched YouTube, have been on Instagram, picked up these books and said, your ancestors are gonna to come to you in your dreams. And that's how you know that you're psychic. First of all, you're not. Um, that doesn't mean that you're a medium. That just means that you've had a spiritual experience. The gift is different. The gift looks different. It feels different. It carries differently. But your expectations are based off of what you're seeing on Instagram, what somebody is shouting at you via TikTok or YouTube, and you're sitting here over a pot with everything in it or at the doorway or at night sleeping, trying to ask to project, making this situation of um, this is how they're going to connect to you or communicate with you. And the reality is they may never come to you in your dreams, but one time, and every other time they come to you by the way of verbal action through your nieces or nephews, or they're connecting and communicating with you um, through scent and sense that thing. That is um, incredibly different than a dream. But people want to say, oh yes, if you do this writing and do this, you do that, you're going to have this kind of dream. And that's how your people want to talk to you. It's another thing, uh, another big issue that people have when it comes to not being connected to spiritual guides or the spirit guides, pardon, is that many people actually are disappointed in where they are spiritually, but not based off of reality, actually based off of a whole false formula, I guess we'll say. Um, and what do I mean by that? Well, again, it goes back to this thing of people going, oh my gosh, the ancestors, I see them behind you, your grandmother's with you. Oh, I see this, I saw the dead, I saw the demons, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this. The reality is ain't nobody doing that. I am an incredibly gifted seer, I know that. I've only seen a couple of demonic um, 
things in my life, and that was when I was way younger. Way, 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 way younger, okay? And um, because of this, people are again are like, oh my gosh, I don't have a good connection. Oh my gosh, they're not talking to me. Oh my gosh, they're not guiding me. Whatever it is, whether it's traditional or traditional, um, that confidence is gone because you're not receiving communication like you are expecting. So what is the flip side of that? Build a relationship based off of what you have or what you've had and what you're now gonna have. You know, if someone was here and they just love peanuts, sit down and just give them peanuts, 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 peanuts. You do that, but you have to build a relationship. You have to see how that giving those peanuts responds or react to you or to them, and that's super important. But you have to build a relationship. The relationship with your ancestors is a greater and more powerful relationship than your elders when they were living or a cousin or whatever that was living. This is very, very important. Why? Because when it comes down to um, truth, which is difficult to come by in this community, when it comes to truth, you have to be able to begin to see the truth of how your people respond and react to you. Are they sending you a vision? Are they sending you omens? Are they um, putting cards in the way? Um, whatever it is, are, are many and multiple people gifting you cards, um, tarot, oracle, um, what have you, playing cards. So there's that. But the flip side of that is honestly and truly building a relationship. But building a relationship is not the same as, oh, well, building and honoring is one thing, but to command and control, that's a whole different situation. And most people, to me, it seems that they want to command and control versus to connect, to be honest. Last but not least, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest ways to make sure that you're able to connect to your ancestors is recognize their purpose and not your desire. The, the flip side of that, the, um, the more negative or more unfavorable side of that is the idea of, um, or not even the idea, but living and responding to life with what you desire their purpose to be. Oh, they're going to bring me this. The ancestors are going to do that. My ancestors are going to do this for you or my ancestors are going to do this on you or to you or whatever. And it's like, no, my baby, first and foremost, culturally, that's not a thing. I understand that through the transatlantic slave route, there has been some differences, but it doesn't change that when it comes to the purpose of the spirits, it goes into two categories. Category one being um, guidance, and category two is being protection. But if you're going to them, ancestors bring me this, ancestors bring me that, ancestors, ancestors, no, 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 no. They don't bring you anything. They're not your genie. They're not a god or goddess. They are there to guide and protect you as your guardian spirits, the spirits that walk with you, so forth and so on. And so that's a really, really huge big element that a lot of people do struggle with because they want what they want and don't really feel comfortable making the particular changes they have to absolutely make. And that's a real thing, unfortunately. So I've covered again those top ways that one would identify that. How do you feel about this? In the comments below, how do you feel about this? Does this make sense to you? Does this resonate with you? Do I need to make something more clear? Should I do a part two? What questions do you have? Speaking of questions with the community, um, the virtual coven, this week the, um, the meeting will be straight up, what are your hoodoo questions? What are your mediumship questions? What questions do you have for me that I may answer for you coming up, okay? I thank you all so very much. It's been an incredible pleasure. Um, many blessings to each and every one of you. You all take care, be good to yourself, stay hydrated out here in these hot, humid, ungrateful, absolutely disrespectful, oppressive heat. All right, many blessings to everybody. Y'all take care. 
Um, I will see you very soon. Merci beaucoup. Oh, oh yes, I forgot. Graduation's coming up this weekend. Graduation's coming up. I am so excited. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. So, y'all have a blessed. Merci beaucoup. Until next time. Merci, merci.